Okay. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallim. Inna alhamdulillah na'amaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shurur anfusina wa min sayyat a'amalina. Man yadihi allahu falamudillala wa man yadlil falahadiyala. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him, we glorify him We, keep, we seek his protections from the evils of our souls And the consequences of our actions We beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To show his mercy and blessing on the soul of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his household, his companions, and all the Muslims who are struggling to follow their footsteps until the day of Qiyamah. I mean, um, we would like to welcome every one of you to this online um, presentation of um, a demo of the KBC, inshallah, that uh, we are planning to hold in the next um, two days, inshallah. Uh, on Saturday, inshallah, we'll go on live to hold the online KBC, the first one that um, we'll do at uh, Dean Communications. Uh, Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease our fears. Uh, we also use this opportunity to beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this fitna that is ravaging all over the world, may Allah lift it off from the earth and replace it um, with well-being and um, peace. I mean, so inshallah, what we have for you today is um, we have our stars in the house uh, and inshallah, they will also be uh, live on, inshallah, on Saturday and on Sunday uh, for the online KBC. But before then, we want to use this opportunity to do a live uh, trial of that so that um, we'll take care of other technical issues that may pop up, inshallah. So um, with um, me here today, inshallah, is um, Ustaz uh, Abdulghani Juma Abu Barakat. Inshallah, he will come on uh, shortly. And I also have, inshallah, Ustaz um, Abdurrahim Abdus Salam. Inshallah, he too will come on uh, very shortly, inshallah. Uh, Ustaz um, Abu Barakat Abdul Ghani Juma will be speaking to us, uh, doing a commentary on Surat Al Asr. And uh, Ustaz Abdurrahim Abdus Salam will be doing a commentary on Ayat Al Kursi. So, inshallah, I would um, invite um, Ustaz. Abdul Ghani Juma to begin his commentary on Surat Al Asr. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shurur anfusina wa sayyiat a'malina. Man yahdihi Allah fala mudilla la wa man yudlil fala hadiya la. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد. We give thanks to Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى. May the peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, his household and companions all together. إن شاء الله. Before going to the topic, I would like to say to speak to our brothers by saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The little commentary I would like to do on the surah, and that is surah to al-Asri, is uh, when we look at the chapter, it's a very brief chapter. And as the scholars have said, that this chapter has a lot of implication, a lot of meaning, a lot of benefits, 
if the Muslims were to ponder over it, uh, it would be sufficient for them. It was ascribed to one of the scholars as an Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab recorded in his book, Kitab al-Tawheed, that it was said that uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal any surah apart from this surah, it would have been sufficient for the people. When we look at the surah critically, we see that what is said is something that is uh, very correct. Because the message of the Quran and the message of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is contained in this surah in a summarized form. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَا فِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this surah by swearing by the time, al-asr. This does not necessarily mean the later period of the day that you know, which is uh, later in the afternoon. It means, al-asr means the time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time because it is We just um, lost uh, connection with uh, the guy. So, to swear, it is not permissible for any of the creatures of Allah, particularly mankind and the jinn, to swear that Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam stage man kana khalifan fal yahlim billahi aw liyasmit so whoever intends to swear should swear by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or should keep much because swearing by other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls into shirk and that type of shirk is called a shirk al asgar meaning the minor shirk and if the person that does that intends that the person or the one or the thing that he has sworn by, that thing is as great as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or even greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person automatically goes out of the food of Islam. So the first thing we learn from this surah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by any of his creature, but it is not permissible for any of the creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from among the mankind or the jinn to swear by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the ahadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of such ahadith is what I've quoted. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam corrected the companions who would do this at the early stage. Umar radiallahu anhu who swear by his father, great, great uh, uh, grandfather or great grandfather swear by their mother and things like that. The son of Allah sallallahu said, La tahlifu bi abaikum wa la tahlifu bi ajidadikum. Don't swear by your fathers. Don't swear by your grandfathers. La tahlifu billah illa billah. Don't swear except by Allah. Wa la tahlifu billahi la wa antum sadiqun. And when you decide to swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should not do that except why you are truthful in your Oath. So, and that is why we should not misunderstand the verse. 
Because some people may say, why is it wrong for one to swear by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Hasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sworn by one of his creatures? So by extension, it is permissible for us to swear by other than Allah. We say no. The Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got the revelation of the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the reason why he had revealed the Quran to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu when he says, wa anzalna ilayka dhikra litubayina linnasi ma nuzila ilayin wa la allahum yatafakkaru. So he reviewed the dhikr, that is the admonition, the reminder to you so that towards you can explain to the people what has been revealed or sent down to them so that what they can ponder over that. Now, when we go back to the surah again, Allah says, Inna li insana la fi khusrin. Certainly, man is in loss. Certainly, man is in loss. So, there is no way I can translate this that to really uh, uh, bring out the Arabic quality of it. Because when we look at the sentence, inna insana la fi khusrin, inna is used to emphasize something in the Arabic language. La fi khusrin, that lamb again is also called mutaqid, is also used to emphasize. So this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing that mankind generally at loss. They are destroyed. Except those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is Iman? Iman, generally speaking, is qawlun wa amalun. Qawlul qalb wa qawlul lisan. Wa amalul qalb wa amalul jawarih. Iman in the Sharia, according to the scholars of Aqidah, the scholars of Ahli Sunnah al Jama'ah, Iman is, is a statement. Qawl al Qalb is a statement of the art. Wa Qawl al Lisan and the statement of the tongue. Like the saying of La ilaha illallah, like the belief and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all this fall under qawlul qalb. Qawlul lisan is a statement of la ilaha illallah, like al saying the, the saying of alhamdulillah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, and so on and so forth. Wa amalul qalb. Likewise, iman includes the action of the act. Take for instance, reliance on, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likewise, Hello. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Assalamualaikum. Um, we we thank Ustaz for the presentation, and um, would um, 
welcome questions. If you have any questions uh, whatsoever with regard to um, the presentation of the stars, would um, welcome that, inshallah. So please, you can forward your questions. Uh, meanwhile, while we'll prepare the to receive the next uh, speaker, which is uh, Ustaz Abdurrahim Abdul Salam. Inshallah, we would um, come in shortly, inshallah. But um, in the meantime, while before we bring Ustaz Abdurrahim Abdul Salam inside, we would um, want to mention to us that um, this program, um, the KBC, as we have line up, inshallah, will commence on Saturday. Um, that is um, in two days time. And um, the broadcast time is uh, from 10 a.m. So from 10 a.m., we'll expect that um, everyone should be here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. And um, also, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for the uh, stars that are also going to um, deliver the talk uh, to us like that. So inshallah, um, before we bring your stars of Abdurrahim Abdusalam in, um, I would like to also share uh, a few words with us, um, just as a form of uh, a commentary and um, as a form of a reminder for every one of us. And um, first and foremost, what I would like to share with every one of us is um, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as-salam, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned in the Quran, husna, biha, to Allah belongs all the beautiful names, then call Allah by those uh, names. And um, one of the names of Allah subhanahu is As-Salam. So what is As-Salam? And um, how do we relate to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, As-Salam? As the first the scholars mentioned, the name As-Salam, in terms of its um, lexical meaning, um, it revolves around two terms, two words. Uh, the scholar said, um, the word as-salam uh, revolves around al-bara'atu min al-ayyub. Al-bara'atu min al-ayyub. That is freedom from all forms of blemishes or blame. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact of his being as-salam refers to that he is without any kind of blemish. So this is um, the first uh, meaning of the word um, As-salam. And the other one is, um, the other meaning of As-salam is uh, al-afiyah, that is um, security or, or peace. So this is the two terms that revolves around um, As-salam. And when you talk about um, the term As-salam, with the regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in the Quran, Allah used the name only once, the name As-Salam only occurs in the Quran only once. And that's it in Surah Al-Hashr, uh, Quran chapter 59, verse 23. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hu Allahu ladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-maliku al-quddus as-salamu al-mu'min al-muhaymin al-aziz al-jabbar al-mutakabbir subhanallahi amma yishirikun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hu Allahu ladhi la ilaha illa hu. Allah alone is the one who deserves to be worshipped alone. Who al Malik? Uh, al Malik is Allah, the one who is the owner of sovereignty. Al Qudus, uh, the one who is um, uh, pure. As Salam. So the word As Salam, the name As Salam, occurs in this verse as part of the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Similarly, in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the word, the name As-Salam also occurred from the, in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as reported by Al-Mamu Tribidhi, 
in the hadith related by uh, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, who said that كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا سلم لا يقعر إلا مقدارا ما يقول اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت يا ذل تباركت يا ذل جلال والإكرام that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم whenever he ends his salah then he only sleeps sits a uh, for a brief moment before he begins to say this word اللهم أنت السلام و الله يا السلام ومنك السلام for from you is السلام تباركت يا ذل جلال والإكرام Glory be to you, um, exalted is you, the Jalal wa Al-Ikram, the, the owner of majesty and um, honor. So by the text of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the word, the name of Salam is established as part of the name of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And um, if you look at the, um, the name, or as-salam, the word as-salam with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, the meaning revolves, uh, there are three meanings with regard to Allah being as-salam. Uh, the first one is uh, Allah who is as-salam, ay as-salim min jami'i al-uyub wa naqais that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who is free from all forms of uyub, all forms of blemishes, all forms of shortcomings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one that is free from all this. Why? لِكَمَالِهِ فِي ذَاتِهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ وَفَعَالِهِ Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect with regard to his essence, with regard to his uh, attributes, and with regard to his actions. Allah is perfect. There is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that you can impute any kind of um, uh, errors in it. So this is why it's important as a, as a Muslim who understand that Allah is a salam, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, sometimes his actions, when you receive, when you are at the receiving end of his action, sometimes it is uh, negative to you, and sometimes it is positive. A lot of the time when people receive um, tests and trials from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is the tendency to query Allah. Oh Allah, why did you do this? Oh Allah, why did you do that? Oh Allah, why, why me? Oh Allah, why me? These are the questions that people ask, you know, during the time of trial. But the one who understands that Allah is a salam and every action of his is perfect, is free from all forms of um, um, error or shortcomings, then he knows that there is a more sublime reason why this has happened. So on account of that, it encourages the Muslim. If you have the good understanding of the meaning of as-salam, it gives uh, the believer the strength to be able to bear whatever difficulty or whatever challenges they face in life. They know that, okay, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is from a wisdom that is superior, which I, at this at the particular moment, I may not be able to to uh, on so because we know Allah is a salam, whatever He does is perfect. So secondly, the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, as salam, also indicates the uh, uh, another meaning, which is man salima mim mushabaha. That is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who is free from all forms of similitude. There is no one that can be compared to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, whether in His essence whether in his attributes or whether in his actions. No one can be compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laysa kamithlihi shayk wa huwa sami'ul basir. There is nothing that can be compared to Allah wa huwa sami'ul basir. He is all hearing and he is all seeing. So this is the second implication of the name As-Salam with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third implication of the name as salam with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will let him you sell him will move me on men or go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will save the believer from his punishment who is saved the believer from his punishment whether in this dunya or whether in the grave 
and the hereafter. So when it comes to the issue of um, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the three implications of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a Muslim uh, has a proper understanding of this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have a deeper understanding of Allah subhanahu who Allah is, and we even improve our relationship uh, between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the name of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, lent this name to some of his, um, his creatures. For instance, Allah, because of the special attributes that they have. For instance, Laylatul Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also referred to this uh, Layl, this night, uh, with Salam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that uh, verse that every one of us know, Allah says, Salamun hiya hatta matal al fajr. There's going to be peace, peace until daybreak. And the scholars mentioned that the reason why the night of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, is referred to or has the quality of salam is because the night is free from the oppression of shaitan. That it is impossible for shaitan to carry out any uh, evil action on that night. So that is why Allah says that night is a night of salam because shaitan is unable to uh, operate in that. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also referred to al-Jannah as Darus Salam, as Darus Salam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says in the Quran, وَهَذَا سِرَاتُ الْرَبِّكَ مُسْتَقِيمًا قَدِ فَصَّلْنَا لَآيَاتِ لَقَوْمِ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ لَهُمْ دَارُ السَّلَامُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is the path of your Lord that is straight. We have explained the ayah, the verses to you. For the people who love to be reminded, who are given to reminder, who loves to be reminded. For these people, for them will be Darus Salam. The home of As-Salam. Inda Rabbihim with their Lord. Wa yuhum. He is their friend. Bima kana because of what they used to do. The scholars mentioned that Allah refers to Al-Jannah as Darus Salam for two reasons. One, because Allah is As-Salam and Al-Jannah is Darullah. So As-Salam, the house, the, the, the abode of As-Salam, meaning the abode of Allah, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refer, we refer to Kaaba as Baytullah. So we refer to Al-Jannah as Darus Salam, that is the house of Allah, who is uh, the, rest, uh, the abode of Allah, who is As-Salam. So this is the first um, explanation um, that the scholars have uh, given uh, Al-Jannah. Uh, similarly, uh, Al-Jannah is referred to as Darus Salam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who enter Al-Jannah, may Allah count myself and every one of us as part of the inmates of Al-Jannah, Allah has promised that they will be saved from all forms of blemishes, whether illnesses, whether uh, any form of shortcomings, not even as little as going to the toilet or not little as feeling any kind of pain. No matter what you eat, you will not have any stomach discomfort. So all of that is part of what made Al-Jannah to be Darus Salam, the home, the residence, or the abode where one becomes free of all kinds of disturbances. As um, this is affirmed by a narration from Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, who reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا دَخْوَلَ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ الْجَنَّةَ يُنَادِ مُنَادٍ إِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَحْيَوْ فَلَا تَمُوتُوا عَبَدًا The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, once the people of Al-Jannah enter Al-Jannah, then an announcement will be made 
an announcer will make an announcement. So what is the announcement that will be made? Everyone who enters Al-Jannah will hear this announcement. Inna lakum For you in this place, you will live perpetually. You will never die again here. So this is from the qualities of salam that Al-Jannah offers. That is anyone who enters Al-Jannah Wa salim min al maut. The one who enters enters al jannah he is saved from death. Similarly, it will be another announcement that will be made. The continuation of the announcement. Wa in alakum anta shahu fala tasqamu abada. In this al jannah, you will perpetually remain in health. You will be healthy. Fala tasqamu abada. You will never fall sick again. Not even as little having having a toothache. Toothache is not very little for those who may have uh, witnessed it before. But not as little as even having the prick the prick of a tongue. You will not even feel it. You will not experience that in Al Jannah. This is from the quality of a salam that Al Jannah offers. You will continuously perpetually be in youthfulness. You will never grow old again. In Al Jannah. And you will continue to live in comfort. You will never feel discomfort again. So, this is part of the reason why Al Jannah is referred to as Darus Salam. Darus Salam. So, Al Jannah is one of Allah's creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has borrowed. Uh, some part of the implications of his name, as salam. Similarly, it is because of the importance of this name and the importance of the implication of this name, as salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it the only form of greeting between the children of Adam. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam mentioned that, خلق الله عز وجل آدم when Allah created Nabi Adam ala surati, Allah created him in his image, tuluhu situna dhira'a. And the, the, the height of Nabi um, Adam is um, uh, 60 cubits. خلقahu, after Allah had created him, قَالَ إِذْهَبْ فَسَلِّمْ عَلَىٰ أَوْلَائِكَ نَفَرُ وَهُمْ نَفَرٌ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَ And um, Allah instructed him to go and um, greet a group of angels, a group of angels, so Allah directed into a group of angels and told him to greet them. And those angels were sitting somewhere. Allah said, first time, and listen to what they will reply you with. And because whatever you hear from them will be your greeting and the greeting of your children. And they said, Nabi Adam والسلام, went as instructed by Allah, went to visit this, to meet this angel. Allah inspired Nabi Adam to say, Assalamu alaikum. So when Nabi Adam got there, he said, Assalamu alaikum. فقالوا, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. So they replied to Nabi Adam by also responding to him and adding, um, adding to it, wa rahmatullah. So on account of this, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on account of the importance of the name as salam, Allah made it the form of greeting, the form of greeting between mankind. And um, it is desired as Allah subhanahu as Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, as uh, mentioned in the hadith, uh, he said, As-salamu ismu min asma'i Allahi wada'ahu fil ard fafshuhu bainakum fa inna rajul al-muslim idha marra bi qawmi fasallim alayhi farudduhu alayhi kana lahu alayhim fadlu daraja daraja bi tadkirihi iyyahum salam fa inna fa in lam yuraddu alayhi rudda alayhi man huwa khayru minhu It is mentioned, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that As-Salam is one of the names of Allah that Allah has placed on the surface of the earth. 
fafshuhu bainakum spread this name between yourself assalam assalam spread these names between yourself fa inna rajula fa inna rajula almuslim if a muslim if a muslim meets a group of people fa sallim alayhim and he says salam to them faraddu alayhi and they respond to him the one who greeted them will have a daraja will have a, a, a status higher with allah than those whom he greeted why because is the one who reminded them to mention the name of allah because they will also respond to him wa alaykum assalam for the purpose of being the reason why they mention the name of allah allah will give you a higher reward than them fa in lam yaruddu if they do not respond to you rudd alayhi man huwa khayru minhu the one who those who are better than them will respond to you, even if those people you greeted so the implication of this is that oh he is so arrogant he likes everybody to greet him first he likes everybody he always expecting that somebody should say salam alaykum first if you understand this one wallah he will not he will not feel anything being the first one to say salam to anyone being the first to say salam anyone it wouldn't be an issue for you anymore so on account of that it is important that we understand that assalamu is from the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has implicated because of the importance of this name allah made it something that we should always um greet one another with so inshallah we will um, stop here and um we will um, ask uh, another speaker to join we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make whatever we have said and what about our the other uh, speakers have said may allah make it beneficial to every one of us uh, so inshallah um, i will invite ustaz abdurahim abdul salam to um, give us his own uh, short um, reminder which is a commentary on ayatul kursi faddal ya ustaz innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu uh-huh. wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdillahu fala mudilla la wa may yudlil fala hadiya la ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqu allaha haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله وقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد وشر الامور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار we give thanks to almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity to share some of the uh, verses of the quran and to also enlighten ourselves about the deen of the of Islam and inshallah we will uh discuss one of the greatest ayah of the Quran and even the greatest of all that is ayah to kursi and this is contained in surah al baqarah that's Quran chapter 2 verse 255 uh the i mean that has been established in the sunnah that this ayah is the greatest ayah of the Quran because that ayah from the beginning to the end discusses nothing but the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so from first word to the last word talks about Allah the first word talks about the proper name of Allah which is Allah and the last word is just other names of Allah we describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so everything with these two names talks about the essence of Allah and some of his attributes uh it talks about the rububiyyat of Allah 
the Huluhiliya of Allah and the Asmahu wa Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is very important that every Muslim understands the meaning of this ayah. This ayah contains a lot of things that we need to know to make our Iman in Allah strong and also to arm to have firm footing in our Akida. Uh, let's look at the beginning of the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu la ilaha illahu. Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything it, it contains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that la ilaha illahu. La ilaha illahu is the kalimatu tawheed, which whoever does not utter the word of the kalima and believes in his meaning is not considered to be a Muslim. Before you can be considered a Muslim, you must declare the shahada, which contains this kalima, la ilaha illallah, and the other part of the kalima is Muhammad Rasulullah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this first statement, Allah la ilaha illallah, can be divided into two, the, uh, the denier part and the affirmation part. The denier part is la ilaha, meaning that there is no any object of worship, either in form of human being or any other creature of Allah. None, none deserve to be regarded as object of worship. None should be regarded of adoration. None should be regarded as the creator of the heavens and the earth. Illa who, meaning illa Allah, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the who are there refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the kalima to tawhid, which every believer must have uttered and believe in it before he or she can be considered to be a believer. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us by this statement that the only way we can succeed in life is to believe in, it, in this kalima and stand by it. La ilaha illahu. None deserve to be worshipped except him. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this huwa, as I said earlier, refers back to Allah. It's not a name in itself, but something standing in for the name of Allah, in which, it, I mean, that is a pronoun, and that pronoun refers to Allah. So if you want to call on Allah, we will not call Allah by this pronoun, rather by any of his names. Because in, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I think Surah to Toha, Allah says, biha. To Allah belong beautiful names, then call on Allah by this name. So, and the first name is Allah, followed by other names. So, if you want to call on Allah, you have to call by any of these names, not by the pronoun. So, that is why those who say that one of the things that they engage in as their own form of bikri is to address Allah by huwa. So, when they want to engage in their own bikri, they call Allah Yahuwa. Allah is not huwa. Huwa is a pronoun referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a context in which one of the names of Allah has been mentioned and not a name on its own. So whoever is calling Allah as Yahuwa is making the greatest mistake because one, we don't know who you are referred to as huwa. It's not clear to anybody. Hua could be your own nafs, because you can take your nafs, your own self, or your soul, 
as God or your desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, have you not seen the one who has taken his desire as his God? Meaning that it is whatever is desired, tells him or her that he will follow rather than the dictates of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you now say Yahuwah, you may be referring to this desire, Yahuwah, may be referring to any other human being or any creatures of Allah or any of the idols. So that's why when you want to call on Allah, call on him by his name. That is his command. So Allah belongs beautiful names. Call on Allah by these names. And as we go in this greatest ayah of the Quran, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some of these names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu la ilaha illahu. So what we have established now is that it is innovation. It is bid'ah to do dhikri by calling Allah Yahuwah. So in dhikri in which they say, Yahuwah, Yamalahua, illahua, Yamala ilaha illahua. This is wrong. This is not contained in the Quran, neither is it contained in the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al hayyul qayyum Now, this now explanation, names now describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that we know Allah more than just that name Allah. Allah is who? al hayyul the living. And you see that it's not, we, not, we did not just say hayyun la, we say al hayyul the real being that should be referred to as the real living being. Why? Allah is the real living being. Why? Because his existence was never pre I mean, predated by non-existent, nor will it be ended by non-existent. That's why anything that exists, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was a time when that thing was non-existent. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make reference to non-existence of human being in two verses of the Quran that I will make, make mention now. Number one is Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Why are you so ungrateful to Allah when you were dead? Meaning you were non-existent before now. Bahayakum. From your non existence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you into life. Then in Surah Al Surah Al Insan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al Atta, Al Al Insan, He no mina dahari, Lam Yaku Shea Madgura. Has it not come to man? A period within a time that it was known to be mentioned. So, it is only human being and other creatures of Allah who are non-existent before now. As they are existing now, there's a time when they will cease to exist. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only living being who will never die. And reference is also made to this in the Quran. Put your trust in the living being, the real living being who will never die. So Allah alone is the only living being who will never die. His existence was never predated by non-existent. Will he ever be ended by non-existent? Then he said, Al-Qayyum. Al-Hayyu Al-Qayyum. Al-Qayyum is self-subsisting, meaning Allah is absolutely independent. Meaning, it does not depend on anything whatsoever. Because reality is only, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it can, uh, can be divided into two. That the creator and the creation. The creation depends on the creator. The creation needs the creator. But the creator does not depend and does not need the creation because the creator 
had been in existence before he brought into existence the creation, meaning that he, he, he never needed the creation. He only created, brought into uh, existence the creation to, I mean, out of his majesty, out of his uh, 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 su being supreme that I exist and I can do this and whatever I do, I'm not in need of it. And that's why I said I'll consume. Now, we refer to some people as independent, some uh, corporate body as independent, some countries as independent, certain individuals as independent. Even at times we refer to ourselves as I am dependent, I'm independent. This is not true. This use of word, when we use it in reference to any other human being is relative. When you say you are independent, you are independent of a particular thing where you depend on something. There's nobody on the surface of the earth who is independent. You need either this, I mean, the assistance of human being or certain things that Allah has created. Let me give you an example. We all feel hunger. And this is something that we need to get rid of. And without food, we cannot get rid of hunger. So we depend on food to get rid of hunger. When we are thirsty, we depend on water to remove thirst. I mean, uh, thirst. So all these, we are in need of one thing or the other at a particular time. Some people may say, I'm, I mean, I'm very rich. I'm a billionaire. Yes, you are a billionaire. You even you are a trillionaire. Let's even say that if you have that. Let's even say in dollars or even in pounds sterling. But if you have this cash, without what you need the cash for, you can the cash cannot be of benefit to you. If you want to ride a car. The car needs to be manufactured. Without the manufacturing of the car, your money is of no use. If the car is non-existent, what do you want to use the money to buy? If the food is not available, of what worth is money? If what everything you need, if they're not available, then what is the use of money? So there's nobody that is independent except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why these two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al Hayju al Kuju. I refer to as one of the greatest names of Allah is Asma'ullahi al Adam. Meaning the names of Allah that are great, that even in some uh, hadiths of the prophets, when you call on Allah by this name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds. Allah's now. So, Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, we will stop here and we pray that Allah makes what we have said beneficial. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته um we thank ustaz uh, abdurrahim abdul salam for his presentation um and the commentary of ayatul uh, kursi ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward him abundantly and um all of our ustaz who have uh, spoken earlier um inshallah the the channel is open for questions, so we we'll, would um, be taking questions. Uh, we have one more presentation, and uh, before we'll um, end today's um, session, inshallah, and um, we'll be waiting for Mujahid um, Oloide, inshallah. He will be giving us a short discussion on um, the explanation from the from Imam Al Barbahari, and um, so inshallah, we would um, call him uh, very soon. He will come in uh, and give us his presentation for just, for just a few minutes. Uh, but in the meantime, we we there's a question here. Uh, let me see. The question we have on is um, the, 
that's um, that's okay. Maybe what, what we'll do is that we'll wait. Uh, we'll start some again, Juma. Inshallah, we will uh, we'll take the questions um, afterwards after the presentation. So Mujahid um, Oloide, Inshallah, will uh, give us uh, his uh, presentation uh, for just a few minutes. Inshallah. Uh, Fadal Mujahid. In Alhamdulillah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'd All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who out of infinite mercy has given us a lot of baraka a lot of blessings of all the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given to us you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarized it by saying in the Quran in surah an-nahl he said, Wama min famin Allah. Allah says, There is nothing of blessing of grace that you have except that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But no matter how much blessing a person has in this world, there is no blessing that compares to the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making us Muslims. Anybody who claims that he has any mercy, any blessing from Allah, but that blessing does not include that of Islam. It is not a blessing. It is called istidraj in this world. Because on the day of ju uh, judgment, a person will blame himself coming to this world in the first place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, He says, on the day of judgment, when man will see what he has done, what he has pushed forward, he will say, Ya laytani, especially these believers, he would say, Ya Leitani, woe unto him, Kuntu Turaba. He would wish that he would just become dust, just like every other being apart from human beings and animals. Now, and the genes. Now, today we want to talk about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as explained, as explained by Imam Barbahai in his, in his book called Sharhu Asunna. The man, the Sheikh, was, he made mention, he said in this book, he said, Qala al-Mu'allif, wa'alamu rahimakallahu ta'ala. He said, go and know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on you. You that you have Islam already. You that you have, you claim to have Islam. Go and know. Anna dina inna majami kiba lillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. He said, this Islam that you claim to have, that Allah has blessed you with. It is something that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deen is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the deen of any one of you. It is not the deen of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like some people would say, the Muhammadans. We are not Muhammadans. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That says, the, the, the scholar con continues, the Imam al-Barbahari continues, said, Lam you are there, ala ukuli rijal wa rahi. It is not something that is based on the thinking of my being, meaning you should not place the deen. You should not judge the deen by what you think. It is not something that the intellect of human being should be the basis for which you know whether it is correct or not, or his opinion. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not based on any opinion. That's why as Muslims, especially people who claim to be the people of Sunnah, the Salafi Yun, Whenever they say anything concerning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will always go back to the Quran as evidences and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala says, when he, was, when he was still alive, he was telling the, his students, he said, everybody, every scholar in this world, raddun amardudu ali, is, he will make raddu and they will make raddu of him. Illa sawim hadad abr except this man who is in the grave, and he was pointing to the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning everybody can have their own opinion. The correctness of the opinion will be, or otherwise, will be subject to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said. He says, the scholar continues, he says, wa in the wa in the Rasulihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, the knowledge of this deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, meaning the knowledge of this deen cannot be subjected to anyone's thinking, cannot be subjected to anyone's opinion, except that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa rasulihi and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
Meaning what Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said concerning this religion, and whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said concerning this religion is what is final. It is possible that people will begin to say, okay, but this scholar said this, that scholar said that, all of all every other human being apart from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are all, we are not masumun. We make mistakes. We should not take scholars as people that who follow in total completely without questioning whatever they have said. Like we've said before, if it tallies with what Allah subhanahu know what Allah said, if it tallies with what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, we say island was island, then we accept it from them. But if it does not tally, we will not take it from them because Allah subhanahu know what Allah has not sent people like, has not sent human beings, though they are scholars, we should respect them. They have not sent them as uja on us. And as it's Allah tete will share and be our work. He says, the scholar says, don't follow anything of your own desires. Don't follow anything of your own desires. This is the word of Allah. This is the word of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't make your desires leave those things and you now begin to do what you like. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us concerning people who follow their own desires. Allah says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاءَهُ أَوَاهُ فَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ بَصَرِهِ دِشَاوَةً فَمَنْ يَهْدِهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ Allah says, have you not seen, oh Muhammad, have you not seen that person who has taken in his desires as his Lord? فَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so I now misguide such a person. Based on the fact that he knows the truth, the truth, but he decides that he's going to follow his own desires. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blocks his ear. No matter what you tell him, no matter how beautiful you present your argument to the person with the Quran and the Sunnah, he will not hear. Hmm? Allah says he blocks his heart. For such a person, who is going to guide such a person? The answer is in the question itself, meaning no one can guide such a person. No one can ever guide such a person who has taken his desires as his Lord. The scholar continues, or else you get swayed. If you follow your desires, you are going to get swayed from the deen. Eh? And you go outside the fold of Islam, you will not know. You'll be praying five times a day. This is Ramadan. Ramadan is coming. You fast. In fact, you do Taraweeh, you will recite the Quran, but you are not in the fold of Islam. Why? Because you have decided to take your, your desire as your Lord. If you do this, every other thing is not countable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah throws everything away. So that your case will not be like that. Those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the service of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, people like that, they will come with a lot of good deeds, so to speak. Allah says, Fajalnahu, on the day of judgment, Fajalnahu Aba and Mansura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew everything away. I see when his volcanizer uses what he uses in pumping tires, he placed it in front of uh, what Yoruba will call a lubo, the, the yam powder. He blows everything away, not leaving anything. So Allah says, the, the scholar says, Fatakruj bin al Islam. And Allah says, Fainahu la hujatalak. Your own desire is not an evidence for you. Oh, I just felt that is what is correct. Oh, oh I'm just doing it. Oh, I never knew so like this. When you have been presented the evidence and you're still following your desires, it is never an evidence for you that you are following your desires. And as it's Fakot Bayyana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam li umat is sunnah. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to this world, he has explained the sunnah for you. He has told you everything that you're supposed to do as a Muslim. Yet you decide to follow your own desires. It means, why does the Prophet Sallallahu why Allah, why has Allah sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the world? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in a hadith that is authentic. He said that everything that will make you go to paradise, that will lead you to paradise, I've explained it to you, hold on to it. Everything that will make you go to hellfire, I've explained to you, to you then go away from it. So the last, the, the scholar says, فَقَدْ بَيَّنَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَأُمَّتِهِ السُّنَّةِ وَالْحَوْلَ أَصْحَابِ And again, he also explained it to his companions. This is also a very fundamental part of the gene. The companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, they are also a way, of, a way that we Muslims can learn our deen. Once the companions are united in a particular matter, once they are united in a particular matter in the deen, it is evidence on us as Muslims. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. He says, Allah, Allah says, he says, one man you shall kick in Rasul Amin Badi Matabayana Law Huda. Allah says, whoever goes against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mimba di Matabayana Huda, after the guidance has been shown to him. Why Tabi Agera Sabin in Muminin, and such a person now begins to follow a path that is different from the from the Muminun. Who are the Muminun that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is talking about, about here? He's talking about the companions. The Muminun at that time, when the verses, that this verse was coming down from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, they are the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, Luwalihi matawalla. We're going to leave him to forever for, you know, leave him with what he has chosen for himself. He, just, he decides, he has either he is not going to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He also decided that, oh, he will not follow the path of the companions of, of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, Luwalihi matawalla. We're going to leave him. You know, to whatever he has chosen. What is the consequence? The consequence is such a person will go to hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. What an evil end that is. What an evil end that is. The scholar continues. He says, Wahum jama'a. These companions that we are talking about, why you hear Alu Sunnah wal Jama'a? Alu Sunnah wal Jama'a. Alu Sunnah wal Jama'a. What are they talking about? What is the Alu Sunnah wal Jama'a? The basis for Alu Sunnah wal Jama'a. Companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, if your if your opinion about a particular matter is that which tallies with the companions of the way the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam understand the matter, matter, naam, ahlan wasallam, we accept you that a true believer. But if your desire, if your own opinion, if your deen is different from the way the companions of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if it's different from theirs, then you are not on the path. Someone may begin, say, is, this, is this not a kind of uh, confusion? You are saying we should follow the prophet. Now you are saying we should follow the companions of the prophet. There's no difference. Why is, it, is there no difference? Because these companions that we're talking about, they are the ones who have from the prophet, a direct student of the prophet. So whatever they interpret this deen to be, is exactly the way it should be. Especially if they are united in a particular matter. There is no difference among the companions. There is no need for you to start thinking, oh, I think there's a, yeah, this is, the hadith says this now, but the companions are saying it's like this. No, you can't understand the deen better than the companions of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allah now says, he calls them, I mean, this Quran now says, these companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they are the people. The companions, the, the holders of the truth. That's the easiest way to the holders of the true religion. Now says, whoever now goes the companions of the Prophet, in anything concerning the deen, the person has become a believer. There's something I want us to understand here. So the people of Awa, especially the, the the people follow one malam in Ilori called them Muhammad Ali al Jabata. They use this particular section of the statement of this scholar as an evidence to say that whoever does not follow the son of the Prophet وسلم, or the companions of or the students of the Prophet, who are the companions of the Prophet, وسلم, that the person is a disbeliever. So, meaning whoever falls into any form of bidah, the person is a disbeliever. No. This particular part that this scholar is talking about here is actually, the, as well as this particular section, is actually talking about the Aqeda part of the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially if the person has been presented with evidence. This is an evidence that when someone decides to follow, especially in Aqeda matters, especially in Aqeda matters, in fake matters, if there's difference of opinion, Amongst the scholars, and the, person, the, other person, the other person has not actually seen the evidence that is against it. Well, we say, no problem. No problem. We ask just the, the way he has seen it, as in, is follow a, a particular scholar who is known to be from the people of Sunnah, and that is the evidence that is clear to him. We say, no problem. But there are some things in the deen. They will say, the Dorora. These things are known from even the human nature. It is known by, um, how do I say it in English? It is known, naturally it is known. To say that Allah is one, 
Nobody will dispute that except the one who is majnoon. No, to say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah and the last of the messenger of Allah, if someone begins to debate that, we say this person is a kafir because the evidence is clear from the Quran, it is clear from the Sunnah. So what we are saying in essence, I mean Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guide us is that this deen of, the, of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala cannot be subjected to human intellect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide us. May Allah make us die while being in the best state of our iman. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahabihi wa man wa ala. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa alaykum wa sallamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We thank um, our brother Mujahid Aloyde uh, for the presentation. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning of this, um, of this class, we did this just to prepare ourselves for the online KBC that we hold uh, on Saturday and Sunday. And um, inshallah, probably the other aspects that we need to be more aware of is the fact that um, while the uh, lectures are ongoing, we have the opportunity to send in our questions uh, via the um, YouTube channel. Um, so, so we have a question, and the question is um, for Ustaz Abdulgani um, Juma. I hope I can bring him on again uh, for him to answer the question. Uh, the question is, um, what, how do we apply Surah Al-Asr, the implication of that chapter which he uh, explained to us just a while ago? How do we apply it? to the current situation of the challenges that uh, the entire world is facing, and especially the Muslim community all over the world. How do we apply to it? Uh, how do we apply it to our lives uh, in the situation of this COVID-19 pandemic? So that is the question we would like uh, Ustaz um, Adogani Juma to answer. So inshallah, I will uh, try to bring him on. Uh, now, hopefully, I'll succeed in doing so. Okay, so, uh, so, so the question is, um, how do we apply this, um, the chapter that you commented or did the commentary upon Surah al -Asr. How do we apply it uh, to our lives in the situation that we face today, a uh, situation of, uh, a trial of COVID-19. So how do we apply it to our life? Now, that's the question. No, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam wa rasulillah wa barakatuh. As Muslims, we should uh, believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries human beings, regardless of whether you are a believer or not. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and we shall surely try you with what is good at least according to you and what is evil according to you. And to us you shall be taught. So as Muslims, we have to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been to trials. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another surah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُعْلِ وَنَقْسِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالْثَمَرَاتِ وَبَشِيرُ الصَّابِرِينَ Certainly we are going to try بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ with something of fear, وَالْجُعْلِ hunger, وَنَقْسِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالْثَمَرَاتِ Reduction in soul in agricultural products, wash the sovereign and give glad tidings to those who are patient. So when we look at what we are going through today, and particularly the so-called COVID-19, we see that this, as Muslims, we should look at it from two angles. The first angle is that we should look at it from the angle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to punish 
or punishing people based on what they have committed of sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ada and Sunnah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish people with the slightest uh, punishment. In this world, perhaps the people who repent and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the greater punishment in the year after. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Certainly we are going to have them taste that is the smaller punishment. Apart from the greater punishment awaiting them, perhaps they will, they will turn back. So all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids that human beings are wallowing in today, take for instance, homosexuality, lesbianism, uh, incest, and so many other things that people do, disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, committing all forms of shirk. All these things call for the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sunnah is practice is to punish the people with slight punishment, so to say, perhaps the people will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will repent from such uh, uh, practices. The other angle is for us to look at it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying us with this. Yes, it may not be that we have committed one sin or the other, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to try us as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alif la mean ahasib al nas and you traku and you cool amen no blay of the noon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Though the people think that we are going to be left for them to say, We are believers, we are believers, um la of the noon, and they will not be tried. Allah says, Well, I got for ten ladin and probably him, for the alaman Allah who led in a soda. We have tried certainly those people who preceded them in Iman, who came before them, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know and make known to the people. Allah will expose to the people those who are truthful in their claim of Iman. And so that Allah will know and also make known to the people those who are uh, uh, false or those who are lying as far as your iman is concerned. So we look at this from this uh, aspect. Then we understand from this that you can never judge people by what they are passing through of affliction. That somebody who is passing through an affliction, that does not necessarily mean that the person uh, is sinful. And the one who is enjoying something in this world, that doesn't mean that the person uh, it's not sinful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may decide to punish somebody who is sinful and he may decide not to punish somebody who is not uh, sinful. So it depends. And that's what as a Muslim we ought to understand. As Muslims we ought to understand this. Don't judge people because they are passing through some uh, sufferings. Don't judge them that they are people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with. And don't judge people because they are wallowing in affluence as people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. So, and that is why when you look at affluence, you don't use it to determine this. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us know that he will try uh, people with this. So as Muslims, we ought to look at the uh, fitna, so to say, that you are going through, you have to look at the fitna uh, as something of prayer. At the same time, areas that we know we have uh, 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 disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we are wanting, we ought to con con correct those areas and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can live to this away from us. So COVID-19 is one of the albia one of the uh, epidemics or pandemics 
that uh, will affect human being or that affects human being. Yes, it's something that uh, people will say we have never witnessed something like this because it's something that is global. At the same time, simultaneously, it's affecting all the nations. So one cannot say, let me run to a particular uh, country. Take, for instance, I want to go to America in order to escape this, uh, being afflicted by this pandemic, so to say, or this epidemic in Nigeria. So I'm going to Saudi Arabia, I'm going to Europe, I'm going to Britain. Anywhere you go, uh, so people are, watch, are also suffering from similar things. In fact, people are not ready to, to welcome you. So, and this should let us know that the earth is something that is a, a kind of a stretching of one. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us uh, know concerning those companions who uh, violated the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So violated the order of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who refused to go out uh, for the battle of Tabuk. We know those three companions who are among those who did not go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described their situation. He said, And the, the earth uh, was a kind of hard uh, on them, despite the fact that the earth is something that is uh, very spacious, very wide. So they cannot go because their iman uh, told them that no, they don't have any option to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the same thing can be said to people in the world today. There's no country that you say we want to flee to, we want to run to, because we want to escape this pandemic. Everybody has their own to bear. So uh, the connection between the COVID-19 of the thing and uh, Surah Al-Asri that you have just uh, said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the insan of the khusrin, so the mankind is in loss. So except those that believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they also advise one another with the truth. They advise one another to be patient. So this era or this period that we are in, uh, we need a lot of patience and we need a lot of uh, moving closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going away from the evil acts, the evil practices that we do. If you look at uh, even people in America and Britain, you see a lot of them, they are inviting even the Muslims to come and do this, to come and supplicate, to come and do this, which they, 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 they run away from before. So with this, it says that what uh, is nothing uh, that we can uh, confront except by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We thank everyone. Um, we want to appreciate your time and um, your patience. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward every one of you. And uh, those who are also walking behind the scene, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, also reward everyone. May Allah make this heavy on the scale of our righteous deed on the day of Qiyamah. And um, inshallah, we will uh, please invite you to join us on Saturday when we will inshallah go on live with this um, uh, KBC, um, which is mana in handling uh, the Quran. So inshallah, we we like to bring the session to a close now. Um, but before we end the session, we will uh, want to um, request all your viewers to please uh, send the link for the KBC to your friends and to other uh, social media platforms that you may belong so that we have as many uh, attendees as possible. And then also, uh, we would like to, uh, tell the, to, to tell them that um, they should um, subscribe to the, this channel, the In Communication channel, um, as, because this, this, is, this is also going to um, 
uh, promote this channel. And also, uh, our plan, inshallah, is to make these channels busy, uh, busy with beneficial um, contents that will be of value to the Muslims. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy. May Allah accept all this from us. And may Allah forgive us for shortcomings. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.